About this time last year, 2019, my wife and I picked up this 2015 Chrysler Town & Country. Obviously that means it's been a year and it's time to talk about what it's been like over that last year. Oh, but one thing, it is just me out here. I probably don't need this. All right, let's talk about this van. Before we begin, shout out to my wife who has been making masks to, to sell people during this pandemic. Made me this awesome one that goes well with my black shirt. So now while I'm out working, I can also rep the channel. Pretty cool. So before we talk about what it's been like over the year, I do want to go back over and just touch on a few details of the van um, that are included in my initial review of it. But just in case anybody missed it and just kind of wants to catch up, here's some, some, some details. Now we'll start with the engine. We have a 3.6 liter V6. This thing produces 283 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to a six-speed automatic transmission. And I have to say, so far, this has been a great engine transmission combination. I mean, I've heard a lot of things about, you know, Chrysler quality going downhill and whatnot. But so far, for us, this thing has been good to us. I guess we'll just see how it goes in the future here. We just hope and pray that people are wrong. And uh, either that or we get lucky, right? But so far, it's been a good stout engine, plenty of power, great on the highway. Decent on gas with that six-speed transmission. She's averaging about 17, 18 miles per gallon combined highway and city driving as a lift driver. So really cannot complain about what we've got under this hood right now. Also, we'll just go ahead and touch on some exterior features real quick. Now, anyone who knows about these Chrysler, Chrysler vans knows that these are pretty much fancy dressed up Dodge Caravans. So, of course, it's got the same general shape and profile of the Dodge Caravan, but with upgrades. Now, the Caravan may or may not have had these, but this has the upgraded HID headlights up front. Those would have been standard on the trim level above, above this, which was the uh, Limited Platinum. But these were an option. I don't remember if they were an option on the Caravan or not. But they were on this and this one has it uh, a little bit of a pain when they stop working but we got through it you get nicer wheels these are 17 inch wheels and a little bit nicer we do need to uh we do need to go get some wheel repair done take care of some of these scratches scuffs and chips but otherwise they're fine you get a lot of chrome accents your mirror caps your trim down here this is chrysler on it your door handles Around back, you get a much nicer set of taillights. The caravan does have LEDs, but they're two circles, uh, one above the other. They're just circle LEDs. These look, I think these look a little bit nicer. The caravan, I think, looks a little more sporty. He's a little more classy for a more classy vehicle. Still, you get the caravan shape. Two features that she really loves on this van is the power sliding doors and the power lift gate. All of which are controlled either inside or from the remote. That way she can be sitting in her seat, picking up a passenger, or letting our son in the car, and no one has to touch the doors and jerk on the doors. Slam the doors was the big thing, the big problem she had with people in the Nissan, is people wanted to slam the doors like an old school minivan where that was the way you did it. It's also why, why our friend Katie, who made my shirt, also made these stickers with the Game of Thrones font, which the wife really loves. You know, letting people know that it is an automatic door and uh, don't jerk or slam my door. All right, let's get in here and fire this thing up because it is like 84 degrees outside. I do like you stick the key just straight in the dash here and quick twist and it'll start right up. Well, let's talk about interior. Got all the power options that she loves, of course, your power windows, power mirrors that also power fold. Your power uh, mirrors, like I just said. You got a switch back here for the rear vent windows. Over here you've got your headlight controls, your gauge um, dimmer, and this light is for these up here 
these halo lights up underneath these consoles here. That'll just dim and turn those off. You got a nice set of gauges. You got buttons on the steering wheel to control this middle screen right here. Give you all the options you're looking for to look at your car, status, all that good stuff, trip info, whatever you need. Of course, we just turn that back off. Watch me fail. There we go. It's got a nice touchscreen infotainment system, which of course is more heavy on the attainment side than the info, but here it is, nice touchscreen system. I don't think the light's coming through very well on this camera. Anyway, nice touchscreen system is not the most up-to-date thing in the world. It is an early Uconnect system, but she, I mean, for, for her needs, she, she really likes it. It's obviously not smartphone speed responsive, but it does work. It works every time. And I know one thing she likes is when she goes to load CDs, you push that button, the screen flips out, and you can load your CDs in there, which is really cool. Uh, you got your typical Chrysler analog clock here. Likes the full climate control. She really enjoys the heated steering wheel and the heated seats. The great thing about these that she noticed is if you remote start the van and the outside temperature is below 40 degrees or 40 or below, it will automatically activate the steering wheel and seat heaters. Really, really cool. I, I Even I like it. Down below, rear seat entertainment. This is where you'll stick the DVD. I really need some external lighting. And you got a nice slide out cup holder here and some storage down underneath. There you go, there's that center control stack and there's that screen just for a second. Also with that screen, put it in reverse and we get a backup camera. I don't know if you can see that, but we have a backup camera. Something she really likes, I really like it. And as someone who backs up box trucks for a, for a living, someone who's never used a backup camera before this, I think it's one of the greatest things ever invented for cars. It's safer, it just gives you a little bit more confidence. I don't care how experienced of a driver you are, the backup camera is the greatest thing in the world. Over here, plenty of storage. She also likes that. You got an upper and a lower glove box. You got this big center console here with a little bit of flip up storage right here. This slides back. Big deep storage compartment that is heavily used. And then if you pull the lower latch, the entire thing slides back. I guess so if you need to allow the back seat to more easily reach these cup holders, you can. It also is great for cleaning and cleaning up underneath. There's one more latch right here that will allow you to remove the center console completely to better clean around it. Up above, we have the controls for the sliding doors, the lift gate our sunroof controller she likes the sunroof and our son likes to have it open when we go through the automatic car wash and don't y'all start telling me about automatic car washes i know they're bad but she likes it when we go through the automatic car wash he loves to watch the things the mechanisms working above the car pretty cool and of course we have the flip down convex mirror so we can see everything going on in the back without turning our heads did you know kids let's go in the back and we'll start with more storage in this car now this thing does not have the stow and go seats that fold into the floor these are just removable seats you tilt them forward they can be removed and the back seats fold flat so you can still get a flat load floor but you got to remove these middle seats anyway we under these floor mats we do have storage so we pull this latch and the whole thing will flip up now the whole thing will flip up if this seat is slid pretty much all the way forward, which I did before coming back here, but we can see there's plenty of room down here. There's one on each side, lots of space. Now we close this back down, slide this latch out to where it shows the red. Now we can just open half of it, which is handy for when that seat is in a you know typical not midget driver's position. We have complete manual seats here up front. I may have forgot to mention we do have full power seats. You've got multiple up and down front and back settings for the seat itself. You got backrest settings, lumbar. Very nice to see. 
This back here is all manual, manual sliding, manual tilt, because again, these are completely removable. As we climb in, for road trips, we and our child both like this right here, the flip down entertainment screen, which syncs, of course, with that unit up front in the dash. And apparently there is a movie of some sort playing, I think not at the museum, is still in there. Anyway, here we have our climate controls for the rear, although they can be locked out so he can't control them. Behind this tinsel, which we put up at Christmas and never took down because she likes to keep it decorated for passengers. It's not on right now, it comes on with the headlights, but there is a, a soft blue halo lighting that lights up right in here and in here and the one in back. And that's what that um, one roller up front is for. We have storage pockets in the back seats in both seat backs, which some cars are getting away from. Some of them only have it over there or over here, whatever, but this one has both, which I kind of like. Um, obviously, with that seat all the way forward, I've got plenty of room. And it's not too bad with it back in, in the average driving position. Luckily, I don't have to ride back here very much, but when I do, it's not the worst in the world. Uh, button right here, the sliding doors, once again, nice feature to have. As that closes, we'll get in here right here. We see power window controls, of course, and heated second row seats. Which is cool. So yeah, these do have you know electrical connection. They are heated seats for the rear. Not an electric car, but in a minivan. Pretty pretty cool. And of course, second and third row both have the manual window shades. That just rolled into the door. I really do like that as well. Yeah, we're just going to turn around to the third row because I really don't want to climb back there. I did that in the review, and I don't want to do it again. But here's our third row. If these second seats are slid all the way back, we have that much space to fit. So accommodations can be a little tight. You can carry seven people in this thing, although some of them might be complaining a bit. But there's your third row seat, the flip up headrests, and they've got their own sunshades right here. Got some cup holders, some little storage cubbies on each side, come over here. Same thing there. That doesn't get used a whole heck of a lot, really only when she has lift passengers. Obviously having a van, she can take more passengers than other people, so this setup is really nice. She actually makes a bit more money that way too. There is one feature of the third row that I missed in the first review. And that is right here on the side of the seat. Now I don't know if you can tell on this light, but there is two buttons and I'll, I might just take a picture of these and throw it up on the screen if I can but there's two buttons and they're just arrows that are kind of stitched into the leather on the side a front arrow and a back arrow if we push the front arrow from here it will fold the seat back forward push the back arrow and it should fold the seat back backwards but it doesn't so they don't exactly work right but that's the idea there it goes you gotta hold your mouth just right with this thing That's what those are for. They want to be a bit uncooperative. But those are right there just in case you've got a rear seat passenger that needs to adjust the backrest. They actually do have that option from the side of the seat. And finally, we'll get into the back of the van. Open the rear hatch manually this time. Another feature that she really likes, and I kind of like, although I don't need a lot of these features. A lot of these just make her life easier is these buttons right here if I can get some light on this thing these buttons right here control these two rear seats so we can do whatever we want with them let's turn it to just the left and we'll just uh, fold it fold it down oh also you have to pull that to drop the headrest first the headrest is a manual that'll put that down that's really nice now I've got another button here Oh, we'll watch this go. This is a feature I actually kind of like, and I have actually used a few, a couple of times. There. Now, this serves two purposes. One, this tip tips up the seat bottom so that it'll let you more easily get underneath it and clean the carpet underneath it. Also, 
I like to I like to sit on it. It's a uh, it's a lounge in the back of the car. Watch a drive-in movie or something, or just watch your kids play at the park. I've actually used this a couple times. Kind of cool. Other than the power rear seats, nothing extremely interesting in the back. You got a few grocery bag hooks back here, pretty typical jack storage and a pretty nice deep cargo well and of course the button right here to close the rear hatch down uh, now that we talked about features let's get to talking about what this thing has been like all right so what has this thing been like for us and our family over the past year's time well, it's probably been one of the best things we've had in a long time. Uh, anyone who may remember, before this we had a 2012 Nissan Quest, and that thing, it got us by a year, but it barely. I mean, two transmissions, just, that thing was a pile of crap. Some, you know, some people may say I'm stupid for saying that about it saying that about a Nissan I've had some people say they've had that generation quest and it's been good and I'm happy for them but in my experience I cannot in good conscience recommend a 2012 Nissan quest sorry however this generation town and country slash Dodge Caravan seems at least so far to be a good vehicle like I said we've had this thing for a year we got it with about 92,000 miles on it. It is sitting right now at 120,000 miles. Because the wife is a Lyft driver, this thing racks up miles. It's, it's had 28,000 miles put on it in a year's time. And so far, we've had absolutely no problems out of this van, knock on wood. There's plenty of it in here too. Knock on wood. The only small things that I'm seeing right now is I've seen a small bit of oil loss between oil changes close to a port. Not exactly sure if that's leaking or being burned, um, but I know it's there and I just have to keep an eye on it. Also, about a week or two ago, she called me and said that she got a check engine light, had it checked, it was PO420, inefficient catalytic converter. So, of course, we might be burning some oil. Not really sure on that. But I, I, got a, I got in there, I cleared the code, and it hasn't come back yet. Once again, knock on wood. There's more right there. So here's hoping maybe it was just a, something small that it saw for just a moment and it threw the light. And otherwise, we're good. But I've not seen any problems other than those two out of this van. Excuse the noise, she has a, a piggy bank in here that people put tips in and it likes to make noise. But like I'm saying, this has been a good vehicle for us so far. No big problems, nothing that stranded us. It still seems to, uh, to pull fairly straight. It doesn't wear the tires weird. The engine runs great. The tranny runs and shifts just perfectly. We've been very happy with this thing. And of course, once again, it fits plenty of people. She can get those um, lift, I think, XLs with a column, not really sure. But the bigger rides that pay a little bit more money. One complaint she had about this thing was the overall size of it. It is, does seem to be, and I think it is just a little bit smaller physically than the Nissan Quest. The Nissan was a bit more roomy. But this thing is definitely much nicer and of a much better quality as far as we can tell and she's really loved this thing she's really loved the features that it has and i've been quite pleased with it too i am obviously because it's obvious because i have the channel i'm a car nut but not really a minivan nut now, obviously there's some strange and cool min minivans out there that i would love to get my hands on to drive but otherwise i've really never been a minivan person but this thing, I, I mean, I actually kind of like it. It's comfortable to drive. It's got great features. Yes, it has some outdated tech. But, Lord, car technology changes so rapidly. 
you really can't help that. You buy a 2015, it's only five years old, but it's already pretty much out of date. And yeah, five-year-old cell phone's out of date, but not as much as a five-year-old car tag. But, I mean, that doesn't really matter. You get what you pay for. We're paying for 2015. We're paying for technology from 2015. Otherwise, like I said, can't complain. It's a van. Visibility's great. You get a nice seating position. Seats are comfortable. So far, it's just fun all around good for us. And here's hoping and praying for a few more good years out of this thing, even though it racks up miles pretty quickly. And of course, that's also not to mention the safety features that this thing has, which are pretty good for 2015. You've got your blind spot monitoring on both sides. You've got the uh, the backup monitor, so when you're the sensor, so when you're backing up, you don't hit anything. It beeps at you. It's got rear cross traffic alert, so once again, if you're backing up, it'll see something coming from one side or the other. Really nice. Tons of airbags. So this thing is made to keep you safe as well. And, well, I mean, if you got a family, that's what's important, right? And that's going to be it for this one-year ownership review of our 2015 Chrysler Town & Country. Like I said, we've been really pleased with this van. We've got it up to 120,000 miles, and so far, this has been a very reliable, well-built vehicle. Eh, except for maybe the hassle I went through to change the HID headlight ballast. If you want to see that, I'll, uh, I'll either put a thing at the end of the video or a link in the description below, or both, so you can go check that out. I'll also do the same thing for the initial review of this van, so you can go check that out and that'll go into a little bit more detail. This was just an ownership update. Anyway, with that, I really hope you've enjoyed going along with me, taking a tour of this van, seeing what it's been like for us over the past year. Hopefully this video and the initial review will give you enough information if you're trying to make a decision on a used minivan. If you've been looking at one of these saying, man, these things look good, they're not bad, I wonder if they are good. Well, this will tell you what they've got and what our experience has been. Anyway, uh, once again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Get down there, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you'll know when I put up another video. You'll, you can also know when I put up another video if you follow me on Facebook and Instagram at that car vlog channel where I always post when a video goes live and sometimes other things if I think about it. Make sure you give this video a like, share it if you feel so inclined. Also, I will also put down a link in the description below to a list of cars that, off the top of my head anyway, I would be interested in reviewing and driving for this channel. Always looking for an opportunity to do that. If you got anything, even if it's not on that list, you'd be willing to let me do that with, send me a message on those social media. Who knows, I might be interested. I would appreciate any and all offers because I'm, my name isn't Doug Jamiro. I don't have a bunch of people throwing car keys at me saying, please, dear God, review my videos. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed. I think I've said that a few times. Make sure you stay healthy, stay safe, wash your hands, and take care, everybody.